The purpose of this video will be to demonstrate how to use the Signal Tap Logic 2 Analyzer tool in Cordis Prime. Before I begin, I just want to stress how important it is to test everything in Model Sim and generate your waveforms before you actually plan on downloading it to your FPGA. This should be habitual by now, but you know, it's a very important step. So I'm going to start off assuming that you have your entire system Verilog program compiled. You've used Model Sim to check your waveforms, and now you're ready to use the Signal Tap tool. So me, I have my entire program compiled. Um, I do want to note for the nodes that you want to analyze with the Signal Tap Logic 2 analyzer, it's really important that you explicitly state them as output logic ports within your main driver program. So, for instance, I want to be able to read the data that I write onto my FPGA, the output when I read from a specific read address. So all of these I've declared as output logics and those ports I can connect directly using the signal tap tool. So like I said, I have my program compiled now. First, we're going to open up the signal tap to logic analyzer. Over here, we're going to scan chain. This just ensures that the device is actually the right model. And here is where we have all of our, this is where we're going to put our nodes. And I'm just going to scroll these through so that you can actually see them. And so I'm going to double click and I'm going to make sure that this arrow right here, it shows all of the options so that you can customize which nodes you want to pick from the list. So I'm going to look into the signal tap 2 presynthesis section and I'm going to select list. I'm going to scroll down and then what I want to do is I want to look at my inputs, the switches on my board and be able to see those in live acquisition which I'll talk about later. And then I'm going to select data, queue, read address and write address. These are the nodes that I explicitly, you know, um, wrote down in the output logic. So I'm going to insert all of them. And then over here, we're going to look at the signal configuration window. And then we have to select the clock. So click this. And then we're going to, you can look at all of the entry names and list. Then we're going to select this clock 50. You shouldn't have to touch anything else in this signal configuration window, but I'll scroll through all the settings to make sure that you're on the same page. If at any moment I go too fast in this video, feel free to pause and just rewatch it again. So now you see this red window. It says you need to wrap it recompile to continue. So you may or may not have the option to rapid recompile, but I'm just going to click the button right next to it, which is the regular compilation mode. And you can save the signal tap. Actually, we're going to save it as a new file because I deleted the previous one. So we'll call the signal tap video demo. Save it. And then we're going to compile it. And this will take a while. So I'll be back once it's ready. All right, five minutes later, <laughs> it's all compiled. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our Signal Tap 2 Logic Analyzer tool. We're going to press Scan Chain. And it's going to tell us to program the device to continue. So we're going to read download the new output file, delete this current one, and add the newest one from the output files folder. I'm going to click start, and my board will now be incrementing. Okay, and then we're going to go back to the signal tap 2 logic analyzer window. And we're going to do that scan chain again. 
So it'll say waiting for JTAG and then it says ready to acquire. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the data window and you can see all of the nodes that we're gonna look at. And it's gonna be a bit harder to tell just because um, they're all pretty scrunched in on my computer, but we're gonna click this auto run analysis and it'll give us a live um, view of what's currently on our FPGA but more importantly it will show us the live data from the RAM memory when we write to it and in the case that we want to read it we can read from that memory what's in that read address. On my board I'm going to write something to this address 1f um, and I'm going to replace the current value, which is f, inside of the RAM with a 4. So I have to match this read address with the write address. And then I'm going to write this value of 4, which will change the f to a 4. So now, currently, what's written in the read address 1f is the value 4. So now if I go back and just set my read address and then my data input to zero, you can also watch back on the single tap um, tool. Whatever you're moving, you can notice that the single tap tool will also move as well. So if you look at the switch, I'm putting a four into the write address and you can notice that I'm also putting a four in the switch and in the switch nine through zero and then also the write address. So now if I restart the entire system, the signal tab will also restart. And now I'm reading through each of the values in those incrementing read addresses. When we go back to 1F, we should know or we should be able to read the four that we wrote into that RAM. And if you watch the single tap, you can notice as well that everything should match with what you have on your board. Yep. And so the Q output is four, which matches what, with what we have in the signal tap um, analyzer. Let's try another value. Say I want to write to eight. I want to write a nine. So I'm going to restart, and then I'm going to write to 8. Now these two, this write address and the read address, have to match in order to write to it. So now it should have a 9 in there. So now it's just cycling through. And so I'm going to restart it so we can look at the signal tap and also the FPGA. Once it reaches um, a read address of 8, we should know that there should be a 9, which is right there. It goes pretty quick, but if you replay the video, there will be a 9 in the queue. Alright, and this is how you use the signal tap tool. There are also other settings that you can use in terms of the trigger conditions. And if you use the trigger conditions, you need to stop the live acquisition and type in basically the stopping points where you want to look at the data at a certain time. So if you want a certain output, like for instance 1C, you can input it specifically in here. And then um, if you have 1C, it'll stop exactly at that point as a trigger condition. And then you can look at in the data what is specifically in or what is being outputted from the RAM. Hopefully um, this tutorial was helpful for you on how to use a single tap logic analyzer. If you have any questions, be sure to comment down in the discussion section. Be sure to post to the discussion boards if you have any questions on the next lab four because using the signal tap logic analyzer will be critical. So um, hopefully this helped you. If you have any more questions, make sure to ask them.